This lesson is on using HTML forms with PHP. Now, HTML forms are a way that we can gather user information. Our users of the web page can enter something, click a button, and that will call the PHP program that will use that information and process it somehow. Now, I have a very simple form here. It just says, what is your name? So it gives us a place to enter the name. I'll go ahead and enter my name, Steve. And then I'll click the Submit Information button. So voila, it says, congratulations, Steve. You've written your first PHP program. Well, if my name wasn't Steve and I were Bob, I wouldn't want to see congratulations, Steve. I'd want to see congratulations, Bob. So let's try that. I'll hit the button. And there we are. Congratulations, Bob. So our PHP program is using the information that was entered by the user. Let's go ahead and look at some code. Here we have the HTML file itself. No PHP code in here whatsoever. So it's a normal page, doc type, heading, area, body, so forth. Now, the thing that's different that we haven't seen so far is a beginning form tag and an ending form tag. This is where all the elements that are going to be processed on an HTML form must be inside these two tags. In fact, it's a good idea to put the ending tag in right after you code the form tag, just to make sure you don't forget it, and then put the other elements in between the form afterwards. So let's go ahead and look at that. You've seen this. This is just a paragraph, and then I've got the words first name with a break tag just to let the user know what it is I want you to enter in that open white box that we had before in the example. And here's how you define that box. It's an input tag, but it's a special type of input tag. There's the attribute type, and it equals text. When you make it type equals text, it's a single line text edit field. Now, there's another attribute called name. I'm going to give this tag a name. Now, I just made this up. I called it first name. Kind of makes sense. That's what I want the user to enter. And I'm going to use this name not here in the HTML file, but when we submit this information to the PHP program, it's going to look for first name. It's going to look for this identifier, and it's going to know where to get the information that the user entered based on that name. Now, the size of the field here is 30. And that just says by default, make it display in such a way that I could enter 30 characters and they would be in view. Now down here, we have another input tag. Input and the type equals submit. Submit is a submit button. It makes it formatted right into a button automatically when it sees the type equals submit. The text that we saw on the button is specified in the value attribute. Value equals submit information. The submit button is a very special button in that something happens by default when you click it. What it does is it goes and looks at the form tag, and it looks for the PHP program it needs to run or call after it's clicked. So let's take a closer look at this form tag. We have two attributes on it. One is called method. It equals either post or get. A form tag almost always equals post. For right now, just make sure you use that. It makes a difference on whether information is found within the form or if it's appended onto the URL. That's what get does, but we want to use post with most forms. The action tag says, what program do you want to call when you click the button, the submit button? In this case, I call the program htmlforms.php. Now it's very important that our PHP programs end with the extension .php. That will tell the server to look for potential PHP code and process it. Now, I want to cover one more thing here before I move on to the PHP program. Up here in the heading area, we have a link tag, and it's a style sheet. And over here, where it says the href, I'm pointing to a file that I've set up that holds styling information. This is usually things about the color of the text, the type of font I want to display, perhaps the size of the font I want to display, these sorts of things. The background color on a page. So we're going to put that information, and while I could put it on the HTML page, generally we try to pull those things off into a separate file. Now, you'll notice it says CSS forward slash basic CSS, or basic dot CSS. 
That means it's in one directory below where our program is running. I'll show you that really quickly. Here's the file structure. I have the HTML file here under the root directory, the www folder. But in here I have another subdirectory called CSS. If I double click on it, you'll see that file, basic.css, that we're using to style our form. Let's go back to that style. And I'll show you what that looks like. Here it is, basic.css. While there are many things you can do with style pages, CSS files, I'm just going to cover a couple of simple things here to get you started. We'll cover more as the class goes on. Let's look here at the font family. This specifies the typeface of how we want our fonts to look on a web page. When someone calls our web page in the real world, when we have it posted on a server, we don't know if they're using Linux, Macintosh, PC. So we have to specify likely fonts that are going to be available on that PC. Arial is a very common font for PCs. Helvetica, more common on Macintoshes. Sans serif is that kind of up and down font that doesn't have the little serifs on it. They're called the little dips like we see over here on this C. You see the little tag on the end of it. Those are called serifs. Generally, we want very clean fonts, so we pick sans serif. So if I can't find Arial or Helvetica, it'll pick the next best font it can figure out that doesn't have serifs on it. The color of the text is black. The background color is going to be this light yellow. And I used a special color code to specify that. We'll learn more about color codes later in class. Here, I said I want all my paragraphs, I want the text to be 16 pixels in size. They're going to be either Arial, Helvetica, or Sans Serif by default, but the size is going to be 16 pixels. Likewise, I wanted the text on my input tags, where we enter information to also be 16 pixels. All right, now that we've covered that, let's go ahead and look at the PHP form itself. PHP, as you may recall, is just an HTML page that may have PHP code in it. doesn't have to. But if it's a .php file and we run it on a server that has PHP installed, it will look for PHP code and process it if it finds it. Here, very much just a standard form until we get to the PHP tag, the opening one and the ending one. So we only have two lines of PHP code here. One note here about equal signs, they behave just like they do in basic mathematics. Whatever you find on the right side of the equal sign is processed first. Remember the old days when you were in math in grade school and you had something like A equals B plus 5? Well, it's the same idea. We process B plus 5, whatever B is equal to, and then we assign that to A. The difference between simple formulas that we did in grade school and computer programming is we tend to name things with more meaningful names that describe the kind of data that we're holding there. I want to back this up. All right, so here's the thing. First name, that's what we named that input text tag that we entered the information in. So this lets us point to that. And this dollar $post is a special array that's passed to our PHP program with that information that the user entered. This lets us get the particular information where the first name was entered. Now, we take that variable, we retrieve it, and we're going to put it into a PHP variable. All PHP variables start with a dollar sign. Got to do it. It's a rule. So dollar first name is the variable. That's how you declare it. That's how you assign information. The next line is just a print statement. We've seen print before. I print a paragraph, the word congratulations. Now, I put dollar first name here. Now it's not going to print dollar first name. You saw it printed Steve or it printed Bob. And that's the way it'll work. If it's in double quotes, it'll convert all PHP variables that it finds into the value that's stored in that variable. But it has to be between double quotes. It can't be between single quotes. Otherwise, it'll just display literally dollar first name, not its value. So this works good. All right, and then we had standard information. You've written your first PHP program. All right, let's go back to the form and we'll try running this just one more time to make sure that it works. And come back here. I'll put in a different name, Jane. 
Notice the font. See how the fonts are these non-serif fonts in the first name and the text is large? Kick the button. Congratulations, Jane. So our forums work.